Greetings all, this is Harry Nick. And this is a less Harry Justin. It's time for some more beers and some more long discussions. Today we're going to go through all of the new points for X-Wing in the month of January 2020 and discuss its potential effect on the meta at large. Yes. Mm, mm. Very exciting, very exciting. Well, there's a lot changed in this. More than I expected, that's yeah. for sure. Um, we had a very subtle point change last time around, and it got the uh, meta into what I would describe and many others as a very healthy spot. Hmm. So we'll see what happens here. There's a few things that I look at and go, ooh, that might hmm, be a little bit over or underzealous, but mm. we'll find out, won't we? Also, hyperspace has changed significantly. Very drastically. It's very much no longer the thing of you buy the things off the shelf and you can play hyperspace um it's really getting a big shake up Mm. i think in terms of gameplay that's great for the format but in terms of for new players i would have preferred that ffg at least tried to keep most of it um based on ships you can just buy i agree with you to a certain extent i think it's going to make the game very interesting it's now a completely separate thing to extended exactly right um extended is going to be the thing that i think a lot of the older players will just now only play it's certainly what i prefer that's for sure but it doesn't mean hyperspace is bad it's just different and it's different to what it was originally i think that's the key point i want to make Mm. with all that in mind let's jump into our first faction here with the galactic empire and just go through each of these and take a look at what has changed. No changes on the Alpha Class Starwing. Moving on to the Lambda Class Shuttle, we have a point increase of two points on Colonel Jenden. Yep, yeah, now Colonel Jenden is the one that sees the most play, so... Makes the makes most sense. sense. Really great in Alpha Strike lists, has been doing a bit of work in the meta. Uh, more so uh, at the start of the meta, but still very much relevant. Hmm. Tie Advanced V1, we have a new pilot in 5th Brother coming in at 42 points. Yep. Yeah. Uh, one point less than seventh sister basically allows you to dump an extra critical into your attacks if it hits seems like a very very high upside ability yeah uh, it also works on some of the missiles that say that once you've once you attack like homing missile that kind of stuff as long as it hits um, and all of those do you can do that so it seems fair. Initiative 4, I'm pretty happy with that. Also, Baron of the Empire sees absolutely no play in meta-wise. Um, it's down two points. Makes perfect sense. Yep. I don't really care about that. Yeah, sure. You want to fly six of them? No. Also, just quickly, uh, this ship is now no longer hyperspace legal, even though it's just come out, what, within the last two ways? Yeah. Um, very odd. As I was saying, it's no longer about what's available. So yeah. just bear that in mind when building your hyperspace list. It was quite dominant, though. Just oh, yeah. bear in mind. Uh, moving on to TIE Advance X1. Vader says the same. Everything else gets cheaper, which makes a lot of sense. Um, everything but the Tempest Squadron went down by one point. The Tempest Squadron themselves went down by two points. Yeah. Uh, Darth Vader's really, again, the only one that sees play. Yep. Um, very much punching above his weight in terms of meta play. I mean, iconic characters, yeah. That's yeah. what we want to see in the game. Um, but, everything else, oh, one or two points. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. No. Nah. There is a huge power level difference between these pilots. Oh, definitely. But you look at it now, what, it's over 20 points between Marrick, Steel, and Vader? Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah, as you do. It, it sort of just explains it. Yep, absolutely. Um, the Tempest Squadron pilot, 36 points. Yeah, it's a decent little filler ship. I think they've probably got better options, though. Mm. Cool. Hopefully it helps some of these other pilots see play, but I'm not holding my breath. Moving yeah. on to Time Scepter. Um, exactly the same story. Sunterfell remains the same and everything else gets cheaper because, again, they don't see play. Mm. Now, just interestingly, uh, this Sabre Squadron has gone down four points. That's the one with the talent. Absolutely. So that could make it interesting, maybe? Absolutely, yeah. Look, if we can use up that four points for an interesting talent and do it as a five of... Mm. Um, yeah, I don't mind the idea of five of interceptors. Could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Trick shot? Trick shot? Oh, trick shot? Trick shot? Trick shot? Trick shot? Always trick shot. Always trick shot. <laughs> Always be trick shotting. Moving over to the Thai Reaper. Uh, we have a points reduction just on the Scarif base pilot. Um, also, the Scarif base pilot's not hyperspace legal, but the yeah. rest are. Yeah, this one got blown up by the Death Star. That's right. That's right. Because he, so. he was on Scarif, he's like, "Oh no, I'm done. That's it. He's gone. Yeah. Whatever." <laughs> um, apart from that, yeah, we got hyperspace legalities on the rest of these, which is kind of cool. I mean, Vermeil is not insignificant in terms of meta play. Mm. Um, in terms of like, yeah, fluff reasons why it's not there, but in terms of actual in-game meta reasons, why the Scarif base part might not be there. It's a great carrier for, like, Vader and Palp, so maybe FFG mm. just wanted to avoid that. So is Vermeil, but this is a much better budget option. So yeah. be curious to see whether those other pilots actually affect the meta in terms of hyperspace. 
Okay, the Tigressa. Uh, two points across the board. Yep. It's about time. It's about time. It's It has to get reduced. Um, mm. It's now uh, significantly cheaper than the Y-Wings. Um, I think the Sinai is four points cheaper than the base level Y-Wing, for example. Okay. Which is good because, frankly, um, it's proven to not be as effectual as one of the Y-Wings. Um, doesn't matter which faction we're talking about. Yeah. It's all pretty much the same. Well, yeah, only having four hull, it hurts. It's rough. Yeah. It's very rough. Um I mean, the veteran turret gunner went up in points as well, so it makes it a bit awkward. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I really want this ship to do something. Uh, it's probably the most suffering ship right now. Hopefully this helps. I mean, I, I just don't know what shell it goes into, even with the two-point reduction. Yeah, yeah, the Imperial player next to me is shaking his head, so uh, we'll find out, I yeah. suppose. Tie Punisher, no reduction or increase on Redline or Death Rain, but we have a reduction on the Cutlass. Yep, once the- again, talking about... Uh, the generics? Yeah, um, a lot of reductions across all these generics. It's going to be a common theme in this video, that's for sure. Um, it basically doesn't see play. I mean, the obviously, yeah. not having those pilot ability, but both Death Rain and Redline are fantastic, especially Redline. Hmm. Um, so Cutlass being that much cheaper, we're talking 16 points. Yeah, that feels a lot better. The bigger that gap is, I think the happier I am. Hmm about potentially running a cutlass. It still feels awkward in terms of trying to balance it out. But Yeah, but if you can start stacking more points onto it, you can then be like, well, it doesn't have the ability, but it's got these extra things that Yeah, you're function. Getting, getting a better discount on something that's carrying some missiles and bombs and mm. could be interesting. Moving on to the TIE Defender. A point reduction on the generics again. Yeah. One point off the Onyx and two points off the Delta. Great. Yep. Sure. Uh, we still can't fly three Defenders. No, it's not going to happen. Just, Sorry, people. Just one point off. No, 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 but, uh, no, no, that's, no. That is intentional. Yeah, I, no, I guarantee it's yeah, intentional. No, I, I agree with you. You yeah. can't have a three defender meta. Um, however, having said that, look, the Delta at 67 might be interesting. It's rough. The low initiative on that platform, I don't know. I mean, the, yeah, I agree. Make the points go further and further apart. Mm. Um, whether this is going to make it relevant or not, I don't know. It's so awkward because, as you said... You can't fit the three in, but the design is simultaneously not powerful enough and too powerful mm. <laughs> to be a three of. Um, yeah, it's a problem, but hopefully it helps. Hopefully it helps. Um, happy to see Versary Reed and Rex will say the same. I think they're oh, in yeah, an okay no, spot. Yeah, they're fine. They're in an okay spot. Moving over to the tight LN. Um, pretty much reductions across the board here. Apart from uh, Howrunner and Iden Vasio. Yeah, Howrunner, Howrunner, six points. Six points increase. I mean, He's a good pilot. It's a great pilot ability. Is he six points more, though? I don't know. I don't know. Actually, same thing happened to Serasu on the Scum Faction, which has a very similar ability. Okay. Um, not six points, only one, but mm. it's a worse um, platform. Yeah. Um, um, just quickly as well, Hellrunner, no longer hyperspace legal, neither is Wampa, Balen Rudort, and Night Beast. Correct. So what do we have in hyperspace legality? It's um the... It's Inferno, um, Inferno Squadron. Inferno Squadron. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Why not? Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I think the main reason for Howron going up in points is because all these generics are coming down. Mm. Uh, it's such a good ability alongside swarms. And, yeah. No. Um, it's, yeah. It, I think that's fine. Yeah, I agree. Um, also, reductions on most of the other ones, apart mm. from Del Mico, Gideon Husk, and San Marana. Mm. The rest have a one-point reduction. Sure. Uh, it feels all right. Maybe that's to sort of counteract the balancing with Howrunner. Mm. You can still do a tie swarm and get sort of equilibrium on those points. Um, it's just Howrunner alongside other generics, which is going to be trickier, which I think makes sense. Yeah. Tie Phantom. We have a one-point reduction on the Imdar Squadron pilot. The only one that hasn't seen a ridiculous amount of play, so makes yeah. sense. Um, we have had an increase with the fifth brother just quickly. Um, oh yes, um, the so crew card. Yeah, so that's that, gonna... that gunner card has moved up. Oh, poor I mean, whisper. Yeah, <laughs> poor whisper. Um, but yeah, it, it makes sense. It's still dominating to the point where it, it's a bit further than it should be if everything is equal. This platform's gone through a number of points increases, so I think it's about sitting where it should right now. Um, the Imdar going down is not consequential. It can't take talent, so yeah, um, that's fine. No problems with that at all. Uh, moving on to the Thai Bomber. Captain Jonas going up by two points. It's like the um, the missile torpedo how runner. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah okay. that's Two fair. points. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. Um, there's no limit on 
Wow, that's a really powerful ability. I'm just, we're just reading it yeah. now. Um, <laughs> working on that platform and all the friendlies, it makes sense, especially with all the generics going down again. Like It's FFG just counteracting that, making sure we don't just trip and fall into a Captain Jonas meta straight away because mm. we reduced all the tie bombers. I think they were doing well at the start of the um, second edition meta and yeah, we're sort the, of in a alpha, place now. Alpha Strikes, they were really good in that. Yeah, but now we're in a place where it's not as good. So mm. I think it's safe to reduce these a little bit. Really want to see more, some more tie bombers see play because they're very different in terms of what the Empire's doing. Mm. They're not playing into ace strategies or like that, so it no. gives it a bit more versatility. The Tire Striker, um, yeah, reduction on the generics. Yeah, also Vagabond in there now with 35 points, uh, one point more than the Black Squadron. After you use Adaptive Elrons, you may drop a bomb. Which is great. Yep, 35 yep. points feels good. Um, it's a bit more expensive than a Tire Bomber, but it's more effectual than a Tire Bomber. It has three red primary, so mm. I like it. I like it a lot. I think that fits in a great spot. Yeah, also but, being able to drop two bombs in one turn. He's, yeah. yeah. Um, Black Squadron going down by four points. Mm. Um, pretty decent. I mean, again, these generics weren't seeing play. I always yeah. like Planetary Defender as a really cheap blocker. Now it's only 31 points. Mm, that's, Maybe. It's interesting. Like it, Adaptive Owl runs with the, an initiative one for blocking. I, Actually, that's a fair point. I like it a lot. I've liked yeah. it a lot since it was born into the game, but... um. Never really caught on. Maybe it will now. Okie dokes, moving on to our Decimator. Monarchy comes in at 75 points. Right in between Oiken and Shiranu. And I commented on this previously, um, the ability to flip the reinforce back and forth. It feels very boring, but at the same time, it could have a decent amount of power. Oh, I think it's going to be a strong ability. Uh, the fact that you can only do it for three turns, unless you have Gonk. Oh, I don't want to do that. But no one wants to use Kong. No, I don't want to do no. that. Um, my point is, Oiken and Sheranu are very exciting with their abilities. Uh, they're very attacking. Very attacky. Yeah. Yes. Very attacky and blowy uppy. Yeah. Mourner Key, I think, arguably might be more powerful. Mm. But you've just got to be clever with the way you do it. Um, yep, patrol it down by a point again. Doesn't see play, so whatever. It's seven points less than the next most expensive one. I think that's a fair gap. Might even go lower than that. Who knows? But um, yes, let's see some more generics on the field. And just moving on to the upgrade cards in the Empire, we have a few little changes here. Um, Sienna Ray and Vader are taken out of hyperspace legality, as has the ISB Slicer. Yeah, the Grand Inquisitor has gone down one point. Cool. It didn't see a whole heap of play. And yeah. again, it's very relevant with large base ships, so you might think, oh, that's not going to make a difference. But again, with things like Patrol Editor going down in points, just... Be cautious, because mm. they only have to tickle the points in one direction or another, and it might be very effectual. So, Grand Inquisitor, keep an eye out for that one for sure. Uh, moving down to our Gunners, yes. Fifth Brother up by two points. Sorry, Whisper. Um, just yeah. can't catch a break. But that's not happening. Yes, pour one out for Whisper. <laughs> and that's really it for the Empire. That is indeed it for the Empire. Let's move across to the First Order. We have our new ship, the TIE BA Inceptor. Now, we're not going to talk about that in this video. If you'd like to hear our discussion on all of this, what's the last video we posted? Annotation up here above Justin's head. Moving across to the TIE FO, we have a one-point reduction on everything, apart from Lieutenant Rivers, which has a two-point reduction. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Now, very interestingly, the Epsilon Squadron Cadet, you can now fly eight of. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So... Possibly, I reckon a couple of new swarms Possibly. could be happening. Now, we're not talking the kind of power level of a vulture swarm where you get to fly it alongside a Belbelub and you have mm. a really good support role. If you're doing that, you literally just have eight of the same thing. At the same time, the TIFO is a lot more powerful than a vulture droid. So, yeah. You know. Well, I think if you maybe drop two... So if you have six FOs and maybe an interesting SF or something like that. Yeah, maybe? yeah, for sure. Like, there are some great options there. Mm. Really looking forward to seeing what we can do there. Um, also, just TIE Swarms in general. Hasn't really been that effectual on the First Order, but could be interesting. Speaking of which, the TIE SF. Uh, Quick Draw is out of hyperspace legality, mm. and we have... Phasma and Lieutenant Lahoo's coming in to the game at 39 points each. Yes, that's interesting that they're both 39 points. I wasn't expecting that. Same as Backdraft. I think power level wise that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Phasma, yeah, like it's a high risk, high reward kind of ability. Uh, yeah, I reckon her with a swarm could be interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, big time. Oh, yes, that's what you're doing. You want to give yeah. the damage to your TIE FOs. Mm. Naughty, naughty. Um, let's move down to the TIE Silencer. Point reduction on Recoil, Avenger, 
and first order test pilot. Rush comes in as well at 57 points. Same as recoil now. Yeah, uh, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, we really wanted Rush to have a nice cheap buy-in cost. Um, 57, I mean, I feel like when we're talking about ace kind of territory, we can do a lot more with that. Mm. It's actually very similar to Major Von Reg in terms of costing. So you think, you compare those two things, it's like, would you prefer the high level ace that can do some really nuts things? Or- yeah, I mean, you got to appreciate the platform is much more powerful than the Thai BA. So this feels like it's a bit more than kind of filler territory. But who knows, it I might be really powerful. I reckon that's pretty good at 57 points to then go up to... Is it Initiative 6? Yep, or? yeah, Initiative 6 while they're damaged. So mm. I, I think 57 points is a pretty good buy-in for that. Okay, fair enough. We'll have to have a playtest of it sometime. Yeah. Moving on to the Upsilon class shuttle. Oopsie daisy, it's gone down in points. Captain mm. Cardinal and Major Striden and Petty Officer Thanison all down by three points. Upsilon is now no longer hyperspace legal, but we are soon getting the she... Yes. In a, you know, maybe six months or so. She or she? I don't she. know. Yeah, in a few months' time in Wave 7. So we will have some kind of option, assuming the Upsilon doesn't become Humperspace Legal again by then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this could have something to do with the fact, um, reducing the points on these ones. There was lots of problems early on in the life of the Upsilon where it just had three of build. Yeah, so they're a bit cheaper. It means that there is the possibility of running the three of them again. Look, remember, hyperspace tracking data is also 10 points, so it's no guarantee of that happening. Yeah, well, you've got to run just the starkiller base pilots, even then. It... It's a bit rough. Yeah. It's a bit rough. I don't think it's that realistic, but just be aware that I think it's a little bit dangerous reducing the points on all of these. Mm. Having said that, they haven't seen much meta play, so it's probably okay. It's <laughs> probably okay. Moving down to our crews. None of the unique crew are now legal in hyperspace. Well, nothing can field them, so... Makes That's sense. a very good point. Very good point indeed. Um, Special Forces Gunner and Fanatical obviously are. Yep. Uh, no points change there and no points change in our techs. 